It is At Home with the Who's presented by UVA Community Credit Union and today takes us inside the home of one Matt Schaub. He is a former ACC Player of the Year at UVA, a two-time Pro Bowler and a 16-year NFL veteran quarterback now with the Atlanta Falcons. And Matt, many thanks for uh, being with us here today, but uh, let me start here. How are you holding up through all this madness uh, in the world today? Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> there is a lot of madness. Uh, you know, we're just taking it a day at a time. Uh, here in the Schaub household uh, with five kids, uh, just working through the daily routine, taking it a day at a time and uh, one step at a time. We're homeschooling and uh, a lot of outdoor play, a lot of water balloons and, uh, you know, sprinklers going and bike rides being had and scooters being ridden. So uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to have the togetherness and the, and the bond and the closeness that we have. But sometimes you miss when you're going through school and afternoon activities and, you know, before you know it, it's time to put the kids to bed. You know, it's fun to you know, have this bond and this, uh, you know, sun up to sun down togetherness that we're having. Yeah, there are some silver linings through this whole process and a chance to be with your family. You mentioned it, though. Five children you have uh, living in that household of yours between the ages of one and 10 years old running around the Shab house these days. All right. So, so what does a day in the life of the Shab household look like from your perspective? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, every day, well, first of all, sometimes I don't know what day it is, you know, whether it might be a Sunday, a Thursday, a Saturday, who, who knows? Um, but, you know, usually it starts out with a workout in the morning before everyone gets up and, um, you know, trying to get a cup of coffee in me before the kids come barreling down the stairs to, you know, looking for breakfast and getting their schoolwork going and just finding that daily routine, you know, just that uh, hamster wheel keeps turning. And, um, you know, after that, you know, about lunchtime, usually they're just, they're finished their schoolwork and, and we're outside. All right. So I, I know you're back in the city where you were drafted with both sets of parents nearby you and your wives. I mentioned you got your old buddy there, a former UVA wide receiver, Ryan Sawyer nearby. What, what has it been like and how nice to have your career in, in many ways come full circle back to the place where you were drafted? Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. You know, very few have that opportunity uh, to have that happen to them, but um, you know, such a great city uh, here in Atlanta and a great organization, you know, run by Mr. Blank and, and another uh, pillar of the, the organization, Rich McKay, who was the GM back when I was drafted, who's the president of the team now, uh, is still here. And to have this opportunity coming into the league for my first three years uh, was awesome. You know, being alongside Mike Vick, uh, a Hokey from down the road, uh, was pretty unique. And then to go off and chart my own path through Houston and some other stops, um, outside of the, the football world, we have a lot of uh, friends and uh, mutual interests that are here in the city. So it's uh, it's great to be back back home. Yeah, it's kind of funny you mentioned you played with Mike Vick for a period of time. You, you know, you got that hokey Wahoo rivalry, and I know it, it's not just there. I mean, it shows up at various points. How quickly does something like that dissolve when your former rival becomes uh, your teammate? Uh, it never really dissolves, to be honest with you. I mean, it was back and forth. There, there was banter every year. There was clothing wagers every year. And for a while, I was wearing a lot of uh, their colors down the road. But uh, it was good to finally see that streak come to an end. You know, one thing about the NFL locker room is those college ties, they never really die. You might lose a little bit of touch here and there because so many people change. And the further you are removed, the less familiar faces that are there. But um, you still have that that pride and that school spirit, and you know, like to wear that pretty proudly. So, um, you know, that that never really goes away. Yeah. Sp speaking of that, a couple young UVA guys are now on that roster in Atlanta with you nowadays, including in your position group with Kurt Bankert. You've got Alameda Zacchaeus in that receiving core. What's it been like having those guys around? Oh, it's been great. You know, it's it's been great to see. You know, over the last few handful of years, a lot of Virginia guys showing up in the league and. And, uh, you know, beginning their careers and, and showing they can they belong. And um, it, it's been good to have them on our roster and, and for Kurt in the room to have the career that he had at Virginia uh, when he went in there um, was great. It was fun to see and fun to see him develop here going into his third season with us. Um, it was unfortunate he you know got hurt last year in training camp, but um, he's a young, bright mind and, and works really hard. So. Um, excited to see what what this year would can bring for him and uh, and with OZ um, joining us last year. Uh, what a remarkable story he's had. Um, you know, a free agent and came in and really, you know, showed his poise and his ability to pick things up quickly. The wide receiver position is not easy to learn at this level, and you know, he showed um, the ability to learn not only one position but 
you know, fill in at different ones, which, you know, not many guys can do even in year four or five. Yeah. So speaking of those young up and coming bucks, how much did you get to see a guy that broke some of your records at UVA last year in Bryce Perkins and that, that amazing, you know, run that they had over the last year? Yeah. I mean, it was incredible. It was fun to watch, um, you know, since Bronco Mendenhall has taken the helm, um, you know, he's really, you know, bring the, brought the program along very quickly um, over the last few years and to see what Bryce I did the past two seasons was remarkable. It was fun to watch. They're an exciting team. A lot of skill players, a lot of talent on both sides of the football. And, you know, made watching their games really fun and exciting. You know, they could score from anywhere at any time. And, uh, you know, his dynamic ability with the ball in his hands, whether it was running or throwing, um, was fun to watch. So those records are made to be broken. And that was I was happy to see them uh, to go down after all this time. When you go back to that QB class of 2004, that NFL draft, you got names like Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger. I guess it begs the question, what, 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 are you, what, what are you guys drinking in the water, man? That class, it just seems like you guys just keep ticking, man. Well, I think it's, uh, it's being in the right place at the right time um, for, for a lot of things. Um, but it's taking care of yourself. It's, it's being a pro and everything you try and do. And, um, in your preparation, how you handle uh, taking care of your body and then treatment, the off season, th things like that. But it's also a passion and love for the game. There's a lot of guys that, you know, come in the league, play, play it for a few years or 10 years maybe. And, you know, sometimes that, that spark or that burning desire for competition, whatever it might be, um, everyone has their own reasons. Um, you know, they find that their time is up. Just fortunate to, you know, be in that same class with them and uh, fortunate that I've been able to, you know, here knocking on the door for year 17. Yeah, so there's been some discussion about, yeah, possibly playing without fans. Uh, what are yeah. your thoughts when you hear that? Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that that that's, could be the way that we go, um, whether it's in football or some of the other sports. But um, at some point, we're going to have to get back to doing those things and playing and, and competing. Uh, to do it within an empty stadium uh, will take a lot of the, the feel and the uh, atmosphere in the stadiums out of it. but It'll make it a whole lot easier on the road when we go to a place like New Orleans or uh, Carolina or Tampa in our division. You know, those places, Philadelphia, you know, make it a lot more uh, easy to communicate and, and function at the line of scrimmage because those places can be pretty loud. You know, for us, we were going to have a game over in London this year, and I think the schedule's coming out on Thursday, and they've already said that they canceled all the international games. Uh, so we won't be making that trip. Uh, and that was going to be a home game, so we're going to pick up another home game here in Atlanta, which – is nice. We don't have to make that long trek over to uh, London, but um, so things are going to have to, there's going to be an adjustment period. Just hopefully things can progress to where we can report to camp on time and get things started off on time. And now it is time for our lightning round of questions. You ready? Look out. All right, here we go. Yeah. Favorite play or game from your UVA football career? Had to be last home game my senior year against Virginia Tech after not having beaten them uh, in, in five seasons. Uh, to beat them at home, and the play had to have been uh, – there's two actually from that game. I hit Alvin Pierman on a wheel route on third and 15 for like a 50-yard touchdown, um, and then, you know, we had the fake field goal at the end, up one score, uh, fake field goal to Heath Miller, and then we scored on the next play to go up by two touchdowns and seal the game. Best advice you got as a player and from whom? You know, I, I, when you're a young player, especially when you're in college, you know, you're given so much information and so much, you're learning so much. You're, you're trying to develop into a football player. You know, Al Groh was instrumental in my development. I had so many good talks with him and so many good times. You know, there was a point my, um, you know, my redshirt sophomore year, my third year, uh, when he first came in and, you know, I didn't play so good one game and, you know, it took me out. And then the next week, you know, he just looked at me, he's like, you know, how are you going to bounce back from this? You're going to go in the tank or are you going to, you know, fight back. And, you know, I just told him I'm going to fight back, but that's all I said. I was like, you know, I'm not going to talk about what I'm going to do. I want to show you. And uh, I just told him, you know, you put me in the next time, you're not going to take me back out. And, um, you know, sure enough, you know, that didn't happen. <laughs> well, there it is. That is Matt Schaub. Great catching up with you, man. Thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, Absolutely. I remember at home with the Hoos. It airs every Tuesday and Thursday night. And today's installment presented by UVA Community Credit Union. UVA Community Credit Union, the official credit union of UVA Athletics. It's easy to become a member. Learn how at uvacreditunion.org.